My name is uh, Michael Byrne. I uh, grew up in County Kildare, Ireland in a small village called Castle Dermot, south of Dublin. There I was a meat cutter and I worked uh, there for four years after I finished school. And uh, I, was the, I was the last of the brothers to come to Canada. Growing up in Ireland was really nice, but there weren't very many opportunities for working class people at that time over there. And of course, emigration was always a thing with Ireland. A lot of sons and daughters emigrated for a better life in the United States or in Canada. And we were no different than anybody else, so we emigrated to Canada too, and to Toronto. My brother picked me up at the airport, and as soon as we got out of the airport and got on the 401, my eyes almost popped right out of my head. I could not believe that I had never seen the flyovers on the highway. I've never seen highways so wide. I couldn't believe how fast he was driving. My heart was in my mouth, in and out of traffic. That particular time, there weren't that many high buildings in Toronto. CN Tower wasn't there. Uh, I think the Imperial Bank of Commerce was the first of the bigger buildings in Toronto, and it was on the move at that particular time. But uh, you didn't, uh, most buildings were 12, 15, 20 stories high. They were building the bridges around the Toronto Zoo out the East End. They had uh, quite a lot of bridges to build there at that time, around Liverpool Road, all around there. And my brother was a foreman working for CA Pitts at the time. And he worked on piling the steel piling that they drive in the ground for the bridges. When you're working on bridges, and especially on piles, well, you have to, to fire up the harmers and, you know, get ready and you get out to the job site and uh, you have to learn or know how to rig steel up, and, uh, especially with the beams. And sometimes you have to climb that pile and rig to start the hammer. And that was quite a way up. My next job was on a uh, high rise in Toronto. I worked there for two years. And it was an experience because I was never up on heights too much before, but at least I grew with the building the corn as it went up. And uh, I enjoyed that. That was pretty good. The first thing you would notice and when you go walk in on a site was this massive big hole in the ground and uh, all this, the piling that went on all around and the, the wooden lagging that went in uh, to shore the ground up and the sides up, well that's where your building starts, right in the, in the, the lower floor, so you could have three, four floors of parking down there before you get to ground level. When you get to ground level, then all the form work starts with the walls, the columns, uh, the floors, everything else involved with that. To start with the outside walls and all the inside walls and you have the tower cranes up above that does all the work, all the lifting and stuff like that. Uh, a lot of concrete to be poured, especially on slabs on the floors, uh, a lot of long hours doing that. Uh, stripping the forums, sending them back down again, bringing them back up the next two days for the next floor. Usually they would do a floor, about a floor a week, until you got to the top. And uh, for the most part you were pouring concrete every second day. I preferred heavy construction. I preferred uh, working on tunnels and you know bridges. They would usually have uh, sometimes two shifts or three shifts on tunnel work. If you were a miner, you were up working at the face with an air spade, and all the dirt would come down onto conveyor belt, and we were working off a thing called a shield. And a shield was something with big arms on it 
and it would press out. And when you would mine three feet, then the machine would, would, uh, would uh, move ahead and then you would grouse all the way around, concrete grouse all behind you. That was the walls of the tunnel. It was all handwork. You had three miners up on top, you had two miners down below, and you had two guys with shovels doing the invert underneath, throwing it back up on the conveyor belt, the dirt. And it was really hard work, but you were getting paid bonus. There were guys working there, they were averaging their take home pay at bonus was uh, five, six hundred dollars a week, which at that particular time was a fortune because the average uh, on construction might have been 140, 150 bucks take home. That was a lot of money for a lot of people at that particular time and they were all able to afford homes of their own and it was a uh, it was a, a much sought after job at that particular time to be a miner down there. I was only here uh, four days when I joined Local 183 and I went to work the following week. At that particular time, Jerry Gallagher was the president of 183. General manager was John Stefanini and Michael Riley was always there that time and there was very, very, very strong uh, business agents that time that if there was any problem on the job site with regards of health or safety or any issues containing to, uh, we'll say your wages or weren't getting paid the proper overtime, call those guys, they would address it right away. If you weren't a member of Local 183, you just shut your mouth and you carry on. I was a health and safety rep with Local 183. Uh, my main priority was always the safety of, of the workers I was with. Done everything I could in my power to make sure that uh, health and safety was at a premium with me as far as I was concerned on job sites. You have to have trained people today. Companies, they pay a lot of money per hour for workers. And to them, if workers are safe, and uh, they're working, they're knowledgeable because of the training they have today. It's a plus for both unions and for, uh, for management. You go to Florida today and pull up on a construction site. You ask the guy how much he's getting paid. He'll say, oh, I get paid $10, $12 an hour. How many hours a week do you work? Oh, I sometimes have to work 70, 80 hours a week. Do you have any benefits? No, I don't. Do you have a pension plan? No, I don't. Do you have any protection? No, I don't. If I'm told to do something that's unsafe, I still have to do it. So, if you put two and two together, without a local union to, you know, to stand behind working people, what have you got? 